Today I'm doing a remake on my English toffee recipe. I've been making this for about 10 years and over the years I've found things that work better than it than 10 years ago. And one of those things is the chocolate. Um, I now use Ghirardelli chocolate or a, a chocolate that's a higher grade. Some of the brands of chocolate are putting something in their chocolate to prevent it from melting in storage and in travel. And that also prevents it from melting on top of your toffee. So with all these tips in mind, and I've included them in the recipe, let's get started. On Darlene's table. So one of the first things you need to do is have everything ready. You have your 13 by 17 and a half pan already buttered. Have all, everything that you're gonna need already out, already open, ready to go. Let me open my pecans. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because you have to move very quickly, this toffee sets up quickly. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna start out with five sticks of salted butter. Salted is very important. Your Toffee will definitely fail if you don't use salted butter. And then two and a half cups of sugar. And seven ounces of pecans. I've grown quite fond of the pecans in here instead of the almonds, but you can use the almonds. Um, it's a lot cheaper using the almonds. And it's just as good, it really is. Please, please, please read through the recipe entirely before you start this. Read all my notes because they're things that I've learned. Use a tall pot because this stuff is hot now. Use a tall pot and I keep my hands on the very end of this handle. You don't want this on you because it's hard to get off. Continuously stir. This is one of the reasons that you will need uh, an extra set of hands really does help. And we're looking to get to the color of the peanut butter. When we lived in Temple and in Lakey, Texas, I baked for the public and this toffee was especially popular. So I made a lot. See the difference already? It's getting a lot thicker, but it's not brown yet. Or dark peanut butter color. It's um, it is starting to change color a little. It's starting to move together a little. It's been about eight minutes, and you see how it's starting to move. As I stir, the whole thing is moving together. But we're still waiting on our color. This is about eight minutes in. And again, I have not changed the temperature, and I've been continually stirring. Here comes my second set of hands. You get tired stirring this, even if it's only for about 13 or 14 minutes. Do not stop stirring. It will burn so quickly. It's okay to go a little past the peanut butter color, but not much because it will change the texture of the toffee. Here we go, pouring it out and be careful here um, at any point, this stuff gets on your skin. It's not coming off. You have to peel it off. Now, when you're done, just put this in the sink and fill it up with hot water. It comes, it cleans up real well. Now I'm going to use a silicone spatula to spread this around evenly. All right, now I'm going to put the chocolate chips on. Spread them around as evenly as you can. It won't matter because as they melt, you can spread it evenly. There is a brand of chocolate that I no longer use that um, is a name brand, but it does not melt. They have put something in that chocolate to prevent it from melting in storage and in ship shipping it. I use Ghirardelli. It starts to melt almost immediately. You can use the semi-sweet 60% or milk chocolate. You see, it still looks like chips, but it's melted enough. You can just start spreading it. So spread this out as evenly as you can. Then we'll put the pecans on top. I use about, about two cups. Now I'm gonna use a sheet of parchment paper 
just to press the pecans into the chocolate a little. Not much sticks to that parchment paper. So I'm scoring it with a pizza cutter. It makes it easy to break apart once it's hardened. Next, it's going to go into the refrigerator, and it will go in there just until the chocolate is set. Then you'll take it out, break it apart, and I store mine in uh, gallon freezer bags. Use a name brand freezer bag. The toffee stays in the refrigerator just long enough for the chocolate to set and be hard, and then you take it out, and you do not store it in the refrigerator. Just keep it in a cool, dry place. I flex the pan using the corners just to loosen the toffee. See how it does? And just use a butter knife and just pop it up. Then you can break it up into the size pieces that you want. I used to store this in the gallon bags and in a box under my bed when my kids were younger because they loved it so much. But one day, the ball went under the bed when the kids were playing, and they went, oh, because they looked everywhere. They finally found it. I didn't have that spot anymore. Just break it up into the sizes you want. This is a remake of the very first video I made 10 years ago. Through the years, there have been changes, like the changes in the melting temperature and the original brand of chocolate that I used and the type of butter. I have included tricks and tips in the recipe, so be sure to read it before proceeding. This toffee is delicious. I've packaged it in cellophane treat bags or in a nice decorated tin for gifts throughout the year, but especially Christmas. A link to the printable recipe can be found in the video description. I hope you find this video helpful, and I will see you again soon on Darlene's Table. Have a blessed day.